Hello, trail travelers. It is Carrie and Katarina, and we are outside of Moab right now. This is uh, February 25th. Yeah, February 25th, uh, 2022. And there's snow on the ground, and we are getting ready to hit Dome Plateau. Um, should be a lot of fun today. There are some great obstacles. Trails Off Road rates this as a 5.5. And there's like an inch or two of snow, which is kind of cool. Now, where is this place? Well, right there is Dewey Bridge. And that is where you go to go to Top of the World. So we are right across the street from the entrance to Top of the World, just on the other side of the uh, Colorado River. Who's with us today? Of course, Katarina and I are together. We got Dana and Philip in their 392. We have Josh and Christina over there. You know them from the Rubastina. And we're just double checking everything. We're getting aired down. We're gonna go hit Dome Plateau. So stay right there. We'll be right back. We are just getting started here on Dome Plateau, and it is a gorgeous, gorgeous day today. This is gonna be a very fun trail. I think anyone who does this is really going to enjoy it. You can go and see things like La Boca Arch. You can see some cabins and mines. You can see these huge caves along the way. This is a beautiful trail not too difficult. It's rated a 5.5 from Trails Off Road. It's about 30.7 miles long and should take you between five and six hours. The one thing you are absolutely going to see on this trail are some epic views. There are some beautiful overlooks and you don't want to miss any of them because the scenery is awesome. I mean, we've got some uh, fairly fun little obstacles here. Nothing too crazy yet, but definitely uh, some fun. Get you a little tippy. A little off camber, but that's always a little bit of fun. So we'll get everybody through this, and then the first set of obstacles is like another quarter mile ahead. Now, if you do come across that gate and it's closed, open it, go through it, and then close it. <laughs> you wanna make sure you leave it in the condition that you found it. So don't close it if it was open, don't leave it open if it was closed. But this section here is pretty fun. There's these nice, um, yeah, it's just pretty cool obstacles here. We've got the Rubistina in front of us, and uh, Dana and Philip are in the lead right now. And we're just kind of working our way through this. We're only about a mile in, just a little over a mile. And yeah, pretty fun so far. Katarina is doing the driving today. Here we've got a nice little drop off. I'm just curious to see how big of a angle we get to on this I don't think it's gonna be much oh we are we didn't even hit 10 degrees Katarina picked a good line this is a cattle area 
So you do want to be careful of not only cattle, but where you step, because there are a lot of cow pies on the sides here. So if you stop and get out, make sure you have good footing and uh, where you're putting your foot so you're not stepping in cow droppings. Wow, we come over the hill here and we're right at the base of these hills, which is absolutely gorgeous. Never heard so quiet before. Got... Shut up, I'm recording. You know, I do videos. <laughs> I mean, this view is fantastic right here. We're right at the base of these hills and the next waypoint is at 1.5 miles, it says scenic. Follow the main road as the Entrada Sandstone towers above you. And it is definitely towering above us. Very, very pretty. Drop off here. Now we have to be a little extra careful today because this is very muddy and there, we might do a little slipping uh, sideways in the mud. Um, I wasn't really watching what everyone else was doing there, but it doesn't look too bad. So we're just gonna kind of keep cruising this, keep a little bit of distance just in case we slide a little bit, but it shouldn't be uh, too bad. This is gonna be a lot easier when it's dry, but there is no doubt we are going to get a lot of mud today. Well, this is a fun little section. Got a big steep climb. I mean steep, it, it just feels steep, but it's only about 14, 15 degrees. But it's just kind of fun because it's a nice little rock ledge. Every one of these you kind of come over and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, what a gorgeous view. Well, we had a great spot for lunch. Uh, that was some awesome views right there. It's 28 degrees and you would swear it's like 60. The It is so nice. Now, right here, th got the cow. there's a turn and it says no vehicles. If you want to stop, there's this place you can park right here and you can go hike in over to the remnants of Arrowhead Arch. Now the arch has fallen, so that's not like that you can go, go over there and see a cool arch, but you could see where it was and, and hike over there if you wanted to. Uh, we're gonna continue on because we got a long way to go today and it's already like 2.15 and we are probably gonna be leaving this trail in the dark. So uh, we're gonna try and keep going, keep moving, and hopefully pick up a little bit of time out here on Dome Plateau. Now coming up, there's a, another uh, parking area here, lunch spot at the five mile mark. Uh, Arrowhead Arch 
collapsed sometime in 2010. So it's, you know, been 12 years or so since that arch came down. Now generally the road conditions have been very, very good. It's fairly smooth, there's very, very little washboard, but there are those rocky sections. So like always, we aired down, we're about 15 PSI all the way around. It's giving us a very comfy ride. At the 6.6 .6 mile mark, there's this nice big steep hill here. We're gonna descend that nice and slow. Oh yeah. It's pretty rocky. We're not having any problems with traction right here. But it is fairly steep. We're well, I mean, I say that again, but yet I'm looking at the the meters or the gauges here in the Jeep, and we're only at uh, 19 degrees so far so and almost no roll I mean a five six percent roll so that's our five six degree roll so that's nothing but Katarina's going to just keep taking her time so that we don't pick up any speed coming down and we're in low gears we're in four low and she's in like manual one just trying to let the motor do most of the heavy lifting here going down the hill Yeah, 21 degrees. We're not scraping on anything, so that's good. And even if we did, we have all those new Next Venture Motorsports uh, aluminum belly skids with the ultra high molecular density uh, plastic on them. So we're good if we scrape on anything. But it is possible if you don't have much of a departure angle, you could be scraping some bumper coming down this last little section here. Well, we've seen a few cows around. See there, munching on some winter grass. We're getting into some deeper snow here. Still nothing that we're gonna be concerned about. I mean, considering the snow bashing we do back in Colorado, this really isn't anything. We're just trying to be careful. Okay, now up here, if you turn left which would be south for the guide described here, 
or go straight. Hold on. Go straight if you are short on time, taking you directly to waypoint 35. So we're gonna go left. So we almost passed this because it's covered in snow, um, but we're gonna go ahead and go to the left here, which is gonna give us a little more time out here on Dome Plateau. And there's gonna be some obstacles up ahead for us to play on. So off to the left, which would be south, and we're continuing on the Dome Plateau Trail as described by Trails Off-Road. So other uh, guides may tell you to go straight there, but we're following Trails Off-Road because that's what we follow. So we love their guides and they're very thorough. So that's what we're gonna do. And here in um, about 1.4 miles, it just says, obstacle continue through so when we get to that we'll see what that's all about just go straight keep going just roll through it Front tires are on the ground. I see your belly. Okay, back tires coming down and it's on the ground. Now give it a little goose to get up over that. Like a pro a fun little obstacle right there you can take an easy line or you can take a harder line and we went down a little easier of a line and I put Josh in the Rubistina on a harder line man that looks good though so now we're breaking some trail here in the snow and we've got about a mile left before we bear right and head to the west. Okay, at the fork in the road, we are going to stay to the right this time. Um, not quite sure where the fork is. It's up here. I think we might have just a little bit further to go. Uh, it's kind of nice out here. We're breaking fresh uh, trail in the snow. Um, okay, no, that's not. Is that a trail over there? I guess that's where it is. Yeah. So you could have gone left here, I guess, but we're staying to the right. And we're going to continue on. Not really sure where that goes over there, but we've got a little bit of an uphill right here. Shouldn't be any real issue. At the 11 and a half mile mark, you'll reach another intersection. We're just going to continue straight. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. Turn left. Continue straight at the, for a more interesting wheeling experience. Okay, so at that intersection, we're going to continue straight. And Trails Off Road says it is a more interesting wheeling experience or you can turn left and head north to save about 15 minutes. But we're all about interesting wheeling experiences, so we are going to continue forward. And we're going to basically make a turn, uh, or the whole road is gonna to turn to the left up here, which will take us north in about a half mile. Now this downhill may be a little slippery for us, and the key is to not get on the brakes, you know, if, if at all possible, because that's what's going to cause the tires to lock up and cause more sliding. So we want to try and keep the wheels rolling a little bit in order to keep the Jeep straight. So we're going to do what we can to work our way down. This is very, very slick going down. Full send? Okay.
Well, we are moving right along. We're not moving very quickly, but we're making progress. It's four o'clock right now, and we're about at the 14 mile mark or so. And there's 35 miles on here, and we have about an hour and a half before sunset. So with any luck, we'll make it out of here while there's still some daylight. Otherwise, we're gonna make it out of here in the dark. <laughs> but at the end of the road, um, end of the trail, we come up to a road and we just make a right and we head into Moab. So we're not far from civilization or a major road when we get to the end. We don't have to go all the way in and then turn around and drive 35 miles back. That would take us another six or seven hours. So at the end of the trail, we are going to be at a road. But right now we have about 18, 19 miles to go, or almost 20 miles to go, and we have an hour and a half for sunset. So it's probably gonna be dark by the time we get to the very end, but we'll see how it goes. It might get easier, it might get harder, and especially in the snow, we just have no way of knowing. We're gonna keep hustling though. Oh, we have a hill climb here in the snow. So this is gonna be interesting. Phil and Dana are doing it first. <laughs> and now we have another little kind of a sketchy section here that we're gonna have to run through. Up here, so give us some room. This is uh, attempt number three. Tell Josh to wait. Yeah, you stop. Okay, looks like uh, we have some deep snow here. So it does appear that we have some deep snow right here that Philip and Dana are struggling to get through. Um, might be able to winch over the top. Um, we, we just don't know yet. Uh, we'll see how they do. Okay. Well, that looked easy. Third time's a charm. Thank you for packing it down for me. Are you filming? Okay, so. They just kind of bash through this and let the speed take you, and then you're going to come right once you get up to the top. All right. That wasn't so bad. Now we'll wait and we'll make sure Josh makes it up. Everyone made it up, and we're going to keep going. Hopefully, that's the worst of it, but you know, that's one of the things about snow wheeling is you just never know what you're gonna run into sometimes and things can get sketchy real quick. And that's why we never do this alone. I would never be out here by myself, uh, not in these conditions. Three vehicles, that way someone can pull forward, someone can pull backwards. I mean, it's sometimes you need two of them to anchor because of the snow. So three is kind of a, our minimum for doing a trail like this in these conditions. Now I've mentioned before that our main trail guide is Trails Off-Road and if you're following along with their app you'll get to waypoint number 26 at which point you can make a right and continue on the main loop. Don't do that. Go to the next waypoint where it says overlook. It is well worth the extra maybe half mile out and back. We were running out of time, but I will guarantee you, you are going to want to go and visit this overlook spot. It is amazing.
Okay, we went to the overlook and now we're headed back. And once we got back on the main road here, we're gonna go up a little bit and then make a left. So everyone else should have already done it. So it should be pretty easy for us to find where they went. So we're working our way down and coming up here, we're gonna make a quick left and take a look at La Boca Arch. Uh, it's just a, a quick little detour. It's not really gonna affect us on time too much and it's worth it. We're gonna see La Boca Arch. So we're making our way over there. Everyone else is already there and taking a look at it. Okay, and then uh, we should be at the intersection here in just a second, and we should be able to see that. So it looks like if we go straight from here, we'll stay on the, the trail, but we're gonna make a left and go up and take a look at this arch and see what we can see. Oh, there's the arch right in front of us. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Okay, this is La Boca Arch. There's a little parking lot right here. Well, not really a parking lot. There's just a little way of turning around here. We'll take a quick look over here. Can't really go hiking over there. We have no idea how deep that snow is. So we're just gonna take a quick look from right here. We'll get ourselves turned around and we'll get back on the trail. But this is La Boca Arch. little ledge ob obstacle here straight up no particular line choices and we are up and over and it looks like we're not done yet so there's a look at Josh up ahead there on that he's struggling with it so we're gonna get organized here so we can get some footage a fun little obstacle the key to that especially in the snow is just momentum and I didn't have too much speed but I had some momentum going Can you guys hear me? so that when I hit it I just rolled right up it made it seem pretty easy we're gonna get to this intersection here and we're going to make a left see the sign right in front of us here it says DP for Dome Plateau, and we are still working our way over there. This has been a very enjoyable trail. 
I've had a lot of fun. The the views are fantastic. I had a lot of fun too. Well, you are not only the one. Well, Katarina has <laughs> done the majority of the driving. I'm, I'm driving right now just because we just finished that last obstacle and I'm just still behind the wheel. But this <laughs> is just, the obstacles aren't hard. If you ever, if you watched our white rim trail video, the problem that we were facing there was running out of gas. We have plenty of gas. We have more than three quarters of a tank of gas. Not worried about gas. Daylight. We're running out of daylight. And we're <laughs> running out of daylight quick. It is 5.30 and sunset is upon us. And we have 12 miles to go. 12 miles to go and we're <laughs> averaging probably about seven miles per hour. So we have <laughs> a distance to go to get out of here. So unless we can manage to pick up some speed, we're gonna be turning on lights uh, before too long. But look ahead of us here. These are, this area is called Cave Springs and there's just a bunch of little caves in the side of the hills here. We're gonna see how close we get. It looks like they're right there on the trail. So we're, we will definitely check them out. This is really cool. This looks like sandstone to me. I'm not a geologist, so I don't know, but looks pretty cool. This is pretty cool right here. We got some old caves. Now there's a sign here that says there's some archeological ruins in here. Do not go past the gate. Do not take anything. And uh, please don't, you know, this is, you know, historical stuff here that they're trying to preserve. So now we'll kind of get going here. Nice little spot for a campsite. No, there was no camping site. No camping sign, and yet there's a, a fire pit. Great. <laughs> we'll keep exploring right here since we're right along the side. You see how deep they go? Yeah, some of them go really deep. This is cool. Looks like a piece of artwork should be sitting right there. This is waypoint number 39. We have some slick rock here and we're just going to cruise up the slick rock. Unfortunately, there's no snow on the slick rock, so it's not going to be that slick, I think. I think we'll just cruise right up it. It's not very steep, that's for sure. And since the caves, I haven't even been in four low. I'm just, I'm in four high because we've been picking up the pace a little bit. But the slick rock, not a challenge. It's a little rough, but it wasn't very steep or anything. So we didn't have any problems going over that. It looks like we're gonna follow this around and uh, see where it goes. Now one thing you definitely got to do is pay attention to your maps. We have missed turns four or five times today and it's typically because we're moving along and we do what seems obvious and obvious isn't always the case here on Dome Plateau especially in the snow. Where we need to go is snowed over, but the, uh, the, the other direction has tracks on it. And so we naturally tend to follow where the tracks go. And that's not always the correct move. So if you're using something like Trails Off Road, not sponsored by them, just wanna say I am not sponsored by Trails Off Road, but it is our primary off-road map. So we use Trails Off-Road and all of a sudden we go, oops, 
we are off trail and we figure out what we were supposed to do. So it has been definitely invaluable in keeping us on the trail today, even though we've missed the turns and we've had to turn around a few times, using trails off-road has made sure that we're going where we're supposed to go. This is definitely a pretty cool section here. We're on some rock. It's kind of interesting. It's like a rock trail of sorts. It's kind of, it's just kind of cool. I mean, I, I don't need to describe it because you're, you're sitting here looking at it, but it's kind of neat. Oh, I got to be careful there. <laughs> Phil hit his bumper, so I'm going to go just a little bit more driver so that I don't, there we go. Made that okay. But this is kind of an interesting area. I don't know if you can tell just how dark it's getting here, but um, sunset was 30 minutes ago. So we're starting to lose some light pretty quick, but we are making some pretty good progress getting through here. But it, it is gonna, it is gonna get a little darker by the time we're off the trail. Yeah, I went right off it. Yeah, you can see. <laughs> driver. More driver. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, no, he's okay. Yeah, he's okay because he needs to be over a little bit further. A little that way. Just a little that way. There you go. Yep. Okay, you're back. Back to the other side. Yep. Yep. You're about. You're like coming down into the hole. Okay. Come, come, driver. Come my way a little bit. Because we want to keep your back end out of the hole, so you don't smack your bumper like I did. He's already out of it. Yep. Well, we kind of thought that we were mostly done and then we get to this little obstacle section here you've got that kind of a v-notch you have to go over and then you have a second one that you can just kind of roll over and then this third one that i'm going down right now is just a small ledge and we're out of it and we're back Rolling on trail. Slowly. <laughs> that kind of little rocky section there. But I think we're good to go now. Before I say that we're in the clear or anything, I'm gonna wait till we're on the road this time. <laughs> oh, you remember our smiling rock adventure. Yeah, oh yeah. And now it looks like we are on the closest thing to a road that we've seen in a while. Still five miles. Still five miles to go? Yeah. Okay, well that's not bad when we can go probably 15 to 25 miles an hour. We should be out of here fairly quickly. But we're off trail and we're now on what's more like a road. So hopefully we'll make up some time here and uh, get ourselves out. But there is definitely still water and mud. And the Jeep is covered in mud right now. And I can't use my windshield wipers because I have a camera on the windshield. So I can't even clean my windows until we get to the end of the trail. So that was Dome Plateau outside of Moab, 
this was a ton of fun. I absolutely love this trail. But remember, we did it in the snow. So there's snow, there's mud, uh, there's water, there's stuff. We're stopping, we're filming, you know, we're flying drones. It took us seven hours to complete this. So bear that in mind. We're probably not the slowest people to do it, and we're probably not the fastest type of people to do it. So if you're thinking about doing Dome Plateau, I would give yourself between five and seven hours to make sure you have enough time, but this is a blast. So now, as we get out of here, we're right on the road. This is the road right here, and we're just gonna make a right and head back to Moab. So, hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. So for myself, Terry, and Katarina, thank you for watching. Be safe out there. We'll see you on the trails.